we had read Paper Towns years before we read Fault in Our Stars. Um, and so when, when we were in the process of making Fault in Our Stars, we kind of started to talk about what else we could do together. And the first one we asked about was Paper Towns. And he said, well, it's actually available. Um, and the thing I love about the book is it's a mystery, it's an adventure, it's a comedy. Um, it felt very cinematic to us, uh, you know, even in a way that Fault isn't necessarily. Like they, they really go on a journey and a quest. And I think that that is a really exciting, fun part of the movie. Um, but ultimately Q's story and his pursuit of this elusive girl that he's sort of, you know, invented in his mind is something that I think all boys can relate to. Um, and, and we just liked it. I think the key is, is that it's a story about empathy and learning empathy. I think, uh, coming to understand that people don't exist for you. They exist unto themselves. And we spend a lot of our time as teenagers uh, sort of letting the world revolve around us and imagining that people are something very different than they actually are. And so this is a story about a guy who's sort of objectifying this perfect girl in his mind, but he doesn't know her at all. He just, you know, he, he sees her from afar and he thinks he knows her. Um, and it becomes understanding that about himself and understanding that, you know, you have to accept and let people be who they are and, and see them clearly. So uh, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a love story in some sense, but also it's a, it's a real education. Q to me is the kid that's got it all together and he knows exactly what he wants and he's trying to do all, make all the right moves to get through high school um, and set himself up for the perfect future. And Margo's the girl that comes along and sort of shakes him and says, live your life now. You know, you don't, don't worry about the future. Uh, you know, you need to experience things now. For Q, what he sees in Margot is this incredible wild spirit that will do anything and everything. Um, she sort of lives for the moment in a way that he doesn't. And I think that's incredibly provocative and, and, and enticing. Um, I think for Margot, ultimately she is untethered. You know, she is somebody that doesn't have a real strong foundation um, of self and being and perhaps well, why, whereas I don't think she knows it yet, the reason she knocks on Q's window is that she sees some stability in him that she doesn't have herself. He did identify with Q. I think he really responded to, you know, the, the insecurities and, and the nervousness that Q has. Um, and, and he called back and said, like, I love this, let's do it, let's do it. And so, uh, ultimately, once, you know, once he did that, we called the studio and um, I had talked to the screenwriters of Fault in Our Stars and I had asked them, would they be interested in adapting it? Basically, like, let's get the team back together and make another movie together. Cara has this incredible warmth, kindness, but also just sense of fun and insanity that comes across on screen and is what we needed in Margot. Um, but I think the part of it that touched me the most was her ability to really access the, the central theme of Margot's character, which is she's created this persona in this town and she feels like she has to live up to that persona, that everyone sees her a certain way, sees her the way Quentin sees her, but that's not who she is. And she doesn't feel like she can discover who she is in, until she leaves. So I think Carr really tapped into that. Ben and Radar are his two best friends and in some ways are the people that he's neglecting in his quest to find out what happened to Margo. Uh, so we wanted actors that really could feel uh, like real peers of Nats, you know, of, of, of uh, Q's. So um, Justice Smith is someone none of us had ever seen in anything before. He came in and auditioned, immediately grabbed our attention, has incredible comic timing, a dry wit that we all felt Radar had from the book. Um, Austin and Abrams, who plays Ben, uh, was in a sense a little bit physically a, a typical version of what we imagined Ben, but there's a, there was an, uh, kind of an oddity and a kind of um, sort of specificity that he brought to the character that felt unique and distinct uh, from, from Nat and, and Justice. So a lot of it's mixing and matching and making sure that you start to see this energy between three actors that feel like they could be best friends in high school. And, and that's sort of how we approach that. 
Lacey is sort of described as sort of like the girl that if you look at her, you see nothing but beauty, you don't see anything else. And that frustrates her. You know, she feels like people look at her and see one thing, but that's not who she is. And, and that really ties into the theme of the movie of, you know, we aren't who, we, who, who you know, the other person thinks we are. We, we're complete human beings. And I think um, she came in and she really desperately wanted the role. I think she really identified with this character, you know, the sort of like, I'm going to Dartmouth part of the character. Um, and Halston, uh, you know, certainly, you know, has both the the sort of if you just looked at her, you'd be like, oh my gosh, she's she's unattainable, she's beautiful, she's untouchable. Um, but when you get to know her, she's warm and embracing and she's also fiercely intelligent. So uh, that's exactly what we needed in that role. And with Angela, you know, sort of Radar's girlfriend that none of the guys have gotten to meet and then he keeps away from them. Um, again, not, not a big role in the book, but in the movie, we wanted to just make sure we gave him a girlfriend that felt real to him. And so she came in an audition and we're like, wow, they have such great chemistry. And we're like, she's the girl, she's perfect. Little did we realize that they, they're like best friends and they love each other. And it's like, it was a perfect fit. He came in with the most sort of well put together visual presentation of how to make this movie and what it was about. We knew he kn understood the character and the journey because we had spoken to him um, about it before. And I think he really relates to Q. He really understands that feeling of, of sort of trying to get through high school and move on to the rest of your world. This book was one of his earlier books. There's much more about the joy and excitement of being a teenager and the sort of the pursuit of the girl, the fun with your friends, that sense of high school coming to an end and, and a journey's about to begin that you're not quite ready for. Um, I think it just really captures uh, sort of a, a, a generation of teenagers that they feel like when, when he's talking to them, He's talking about them and to them in a way that they get. So uh, if you if you sort of love those kind of like classic, timeless high school movies, I think you'll love this movie.